Once was a land of woe and strife Where the people were bereft of hope They prayed to their gods of might and light To deliver the heroes of old Instead they got Heroes, did you hear the quotes in my voice Of moral ambiguity They may help or may not help you at all Depends on what's in it for them They kick and they punch and they maul and they smash They lie and they scheme and they burn and they slash Succeed or fail, it adds to the tale Dungeons and debacles starts now Hello and welcome to this very special Super Bowl episode of the Dungeons and Debacles podcast we are currently recording right now as the game is going on, but that's okay because none of us care about sports ball. I'm our host and Dungeon Master Kevin, going around the table, Blake. Hi, I'm Blake, and I'll be playing Juliet, the Dragonborn Eldritch Knight slash Wizard. And John. Hey, y'all. I'm playing Little Dice, Elven Monk. He's visiting home, so he's good. He's going back the way he grew up talking about. <laughs> and oh, they, they call him evil, but he don't think so. <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> I'm Hannah, and I'll be playing Talia, the human rogue. And uh, Shane. Shane playing Alexander, the human bard. All right, so the last time on Dungeons and Debacles podcast, you are making your way up to Fadel. Um, you went through the town of Pirin, which you were... Um, given a little shakedown by one of the guards to uh, cross the bridge uh, over one of these uh, rivers. Um, you made it across there and started heading north um, where you were waylaid by some wood elves. Um, after uh, some s smooth talking and uh, some explanation um, by Alunidas of why you are um, trying to get through this region um, they agreed to take you to meet their leader up in Lullen. Uh, you made it through town and into the this uh, log structure that appears to be some sort of meeting house um, to meet their leader, and that is where you find yourselves now. So inside, um, you are seeing some wood elves, and it gets really quiet as you walk in. There's this... Uh, one wood elf in the center uh, of this uh, table at the end of this hall um, that you see. Um, he's kind of like big and stocky for an elf. Um, he appears to be maybe in his middle years for an elf, so you think maybe like May 300 years old or something like that. Um, he's got this uh, long brown hair that's uh, tied back in braids, and uh, he sees you enter. And looks up at you and says, So, what is it y'all want? Uh, Lunada steps forward and he speaks up says, uh, We're going to Fagate. I need to finally, you know, technically, legally become an adult so as I can get married. Uh, looks like it's a little late for you, boy. Where you been? I've been out in the world, you know, my parents, they were assholes, and I wanted to get as far away from them as possible. Yeah, I guess I can understand that. But you gotta understand, right now, that waygate's on lockdown. It ain't safe for nobody be going up there. Well, I ain't fixing to let anybody get in my way. And I don't, don't really care if them high elves, so-called, have it on lockdown. I'm gonna go through it and do what needs to be done. Well, you gotta understand, it ain't just the high elves. You got wood elves out in that, out in the woods there, protecting our territory from the high elves, and they ain't gonna take too kindly for you passing through. This group over here, ours, Bellin. I mean, he's an understanding fellow. We don't have no control over them other wood elves up in them woods, and I can tell you right now, they won't be as understanding as Bellin, cause he's got a soft heart. Well, that, that sounds like that's for us to solve and not for you. You just let us pass on through and we'll deal with them when we get to them. Well, surely you must know that if you were going to go to the Fay Gate for your ritual, it'd have to be approved by your elders. Seeing as you ain't got no elders, I guess that would fall to me. I, I suppose. I'm 
not too pleased about that, but if you're willing to let us pass on through, then I wouldn't uh, object to you taking on that role. Well, let me think for a second. And then uh, he motioned some uh, of the uh, the two elves uh, that are beside him. They huddle together and they talk for a little bit. And uh, a minute or two goes by and uh, they step away from him and he looks up at you and says, Well, your safety is not really any of my concern, so I can't really stop you from going through there. But I could help you on your way if you would do something to, to prove to me that you are an, an, an adult and can be a useful member of our society. Hey, how would I go about doing that? Need me to drop my pants? He chuckles. <laughs> no, no, that won't be necessary. Your boy parts don't prove you're an adult anyway. So what would I have to do? Well, how about you, uh, Performing a little contest that we got going on here. Damn you, Blake. What kind of contest? <laughs> well, us wood elves in this region, we send ambassadors back and forth between our villages. And one thing that we like to do is play this game to prove our prowess in combat. Saying that you could uh, defeat our team with uh, the people you got here, that sure would prove yourself. Yeah, I suppose it could. Um, what, what sort of game are we talking about? I mean, if it's throwing knives and then Talia here, she she gonna she gonna whip them up real good. Well, that's part of it. This little game uh, we play around here we call hand egg. That don't ring a bell. Oh, it's real easy. All you gotta do is take an egg and then take it from one side of the field to the other. Problem is, is you got people in your ways. Well, that sounds always some motherfucker. Is yeah. there like any rules? Are we allowed to kill people or what? All oh, the rules are real simple. It's a best out of three, so the first team to score two wins. And you have to move that egg to your opponent's finish line. And you got one minute to do it. All spells and weapons are legal. And then the event that somebody gets knocked out will be healed at the end of that one minute or if the team scores. Oh, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Huh. Well, we like it. And uh, Ewan's turned up and on an auspicious day. This is actually a, a high holiday for us where we have an exhibition each year of our, our hand egg team here who's... Uh, pretty famous across the region as uh, they four times champions here in the last decade they call the Lillian Lions we's mighty proud of them so if uh, you defeat them in this uh, hand egg contest then you'll have my blessing and I'll give you a writ that anybody sees it they'll probably let you pass if they're a wood elf can't promise nothing about them high elves you see though well, dang, that sounds just fine. So, is it a deal? Well, I'm happy with it. How about y'all? Turns to the group. I mean, I'm not usually one for games, but sure, why not? If it'll get us across. Talia? Alexander? I guess. <laughs> All right. He's going to clap his uh, hands. Say, well, it's a deal then. Oh, by the way, my name's Colin. Colin Fairshot. I'm the leader around here. Who's you? They call me Luno. This here's my fiance. As they call it down south, they all fancy down there. Her name's Julie. This here is Talia, and that over there is Alex. Ah, uh, pleased to meet you. Well, we got some time for a contest starts. It, usually, we don't start till uh, it starts getting dark. So, uh, y'all's probably got about two or three hours to kill, or you know. Maybe find somebody, talk about the finer points, a uh, hand egg, get yourselves ready. But uh, we'll be ready to go about time sun goes down. All right, that sounds perfect to us. Let's go get ready, y'all. Okay, sounds good. Um, is there some spot we can kind of... Well, I guess we have our wagon. 
uh, where should we meet you? Where are we playing this game? Oh, it's out in the hand egg field. You can't miss it. It's that big open clearing space we got up the north here. Okie dokie. So if there's nothing else, uh, we're sort of busy here. I don't doubt. Let's go. So, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what are you busy with? I don't know that's your business, stranger. Okay, fair enough. So uh, they're going to go back to uh, what they're doing, and you kind of get the feeling that you've been dismissed. All right, I guess we head out to the cart and talk strategy. Okay, so uh, you exit outside, and um, that group of people still out there looking at this uh, this log uh, building expectantly as you walk out. And um, Bellin's going to walk it. He was inside with you the whole time. He's going to walk outside and say, Okay, okay, show's over for now. But we got y'all special treat going on tonight. Y'all know how it's, uh, as everybody in Lola knows, it's our annual Egg Bowl game tonight. These strangers here is going to be uh, fighting our lines. What you think about that? And there's... Uh, some murmuring in the, the crowd and they give you like some strange looks and uh, you're going to see Luna Das gives a pathetic little flex <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's going to be uh, one elf who comes moving through this crowd and uh, you're going to get a look at him he's like this really tall muscular uh, elf with this flowing blonde hair he's going to say who the hells are these people who they coming here to be playing us? I don't know none of these people. Who the hell are they to have the honor to get their asses kicked by us? Melon's gonna go. Now, now, Tom, calm down. Don't you go police my tone, Melon. This was a decision that Colin made. You see this fella right here? He's trying to get up to the Fay Gate for his dull hut ritual and. Or to get the, the blessing of uh, his elders here, who Colin's going to take responsibility for that. Said he's going to uh, play y'all, and if he they win, he's going to give a blessing go up to Fagay. And uh, you're going to see uh, Blonde Elf that he just called Tom. Sam. Huh. Well, it sure should be easy. I'll see y'all tenderfoot tonight. And you're going to see him walk off back into this uh, crowd. And uh, Bellin's going to come up to you, uh, Lunados, and say, Don't pay him no mind. That's old Tom Crating. He's the leader of the lines, and he's a prima donna. Fucking Tom Crady? <laughs> God damn it. I, I, was, I was doing so well not laughing, and then you said something. <laughs> he let all that winning go to his head. Some said he the best it ever been. But rumors going around, he's a cheater. <laughs> well, I Is think that he's so? just a joke. People been saying that last championship him won. He used a hollow egg, just so it'd be lighter, be easy to run with. But he talks like it's all that vegan diet makes him strong and fast. But I'll tell you what, I think it's all that coitus with that sexy wife he's got. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Her name's Gazelle on account of she's all slender, got them long legs. You know, she's half high off. Oh, I gotta take him down then. Somebody needs to take him down a peg, if you ask me. But don't go spreading that around. Don't worry, save with me. Talia's gonna very quietly lean over to Juliet and say, When did a Lunados get an accent? I don't know. Maybe he's trying to fit in? Is this him socially interacting with elves? Is this some sort of magic trick? <laughs> I don't know, but I feel like I should be writing a scientific paper right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl. All right, Bellin. Uh, we got to go discuss strategy, figure out how we're going to win this hand egg thing. So if you don't mind, we'll go do our thing for a bit. Well, good luck to you. I'll see you tonight. Thank you, Captain. And I'm rooting for you. Don't let this get around, but I'd rather see anybody win than the Lions. Bunch of damn cheaters and prima donnas, if you ask me. Oh, man. Yeah, I'll keep that close. You're from here and you don't like it? Well, I never said I was from here. Oh. 
Well, I, I think I understand a bit better then. I'm partial to appearing piranhas. I have no particular opinion. We didn't play hand day where I'm from. We're from way up northwest across the river. We don't play hand egg up here? No, no. It, it didn't make it across the river, I don't think. No, they play uh, egg hockey up here, don't they? Yep. And not enough That's scoring in that game for me. Yeah, you know, to each their own. They do have some pretty good fights, though. Hey, yep. It's time I went to a fight and the game broke out. <laughs> He's going to slap you on the back. He's going to say, I don't want to let you all to it. I got work to do myself. Very well. Lead night. All right, so the uh, crowd starts uh, dispersing. And uh, are you making your way to the hand egg field? We're going yep. to the wagon to talk strategy, and then we'll make our way to the field. Okay. Wagon's not very far away since, uh, you know, it was moved up uh, with you. And uh, the driver of that cart's down, and your weapons are in a sack in the back of the, the wagon. And uh, Bellin's going to come up to that driver and say, uh, oh, by the way, they can have their weapons back. They're playing hand egg not if you can believe that. And uh, the driver of the car is going to shake his head and say, they ain't going to get their asses stomped by the lines. You know that. Bell's going to say, well, you never know. I know they're an underdog, but you know I always root for the underdog. And that's why I always take your coin. And uh, they both have a chuckle over that. And they're going to uh, walk off. Your equipment and your horses and everything are ready there for you to use. All right. I think I should carry the, the egg because I'm really fast and I can do my dancey thing where I don't get hit by people. What do y'all think? Um, I think that uh, we should utilize Alexander's ability to turn some of us invisible. Ooh, that sounds like an excellent... Wait, can you do that? I thought, well, yes. If we can, we should. Uh, and Damn. during this time, Talia's going to be tucking knives back in her various sheaths and everybody just looks as there is amazed as like these these daggers like all of them start disappearing and there's quite a bit of them got any thoughts um, Juliet? Do, you, Alexander? Oh, do we even know how this game is played like are we allowed to use weapons are we can I stab a, 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 a dude like yes we're allowed to use weapons yeah. weapon spells um, all legal I, I request that we not kill anyone. It just looks bad for us. <sighs> Fine. I suppose that makes sense. Maybe they give us a trophy. Maybe that'll be a hit. I mean, this is—is is it cheating if I turn into a bat and just carry the egg over where they can't reach? Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be small enough for you to carry as a bat. Well, if she's carrying it and turns into a bat, I mean, her clothes and weapons all turn with her to bat, yeah? I mean, I can just hand her the egg, and then when I would do that, just use the time to cast Invisible. And then she can sneak across the field. Yeah, but Although I can that would imply that, that would imply that uh, it was it's dark enough outside for me to turn into a bat. I should not It's going to be play evening. He said it would be a couple hours. Well, yeah, but is the field going to be lighted? Like, I don't know how any of this works. True. Mm -hmm. uh, you could ask around. We should ask around and see what the, the traditions are around this game. It will be excellent for my research paper. <laughs> Since when were you doing a research paper anyway? Since I heard Alunados get an accent randomly out of nowhere and I need to understand. It's not randomly out of nowhere. I grew up here. You know, it's just, I don't like these people much, so I don't talk like them when I don't have to. Lunadas says that last bit pretty quiet. All right, I think uh, maybe we should learn the finer points, check out the field, and see what the terrain is like and how long it is. That'll give us an idea of exactly how far we need to go and what kind of obstacles we'll have to avoid. I don't know if it's a clear field. Ooh, good point. Might be difficult terrain. So, Kevin, we're exploring. Okay. So, uh, are you guys going to the field? Sure. There'll probably be plenty yep. of people there getting their pregame on. All right. So uh, you're going to walk to the uh, the north side of town. You are going to see um, basically these mounds uh, that come up um, in this fairly 
um, flat terrain here. Um, you know, you've got woods all around and you're going to come to this uh, large clearing and on um, to the east and west side of this clearing these are these uh, large dirt mounds that probably go up maybe about 30 feet and they're sloped down and you are going to come to this uh, field. Can everybody see the map? Yes! Okay, so I uh, can. you uh, come to this field um, that's probably about a hundred feet uh, long and about 110 feet wide um, in the center of these two mounds. You're guessing this is the playing field. Uh, on this field, you are going to see this uh, white lime or stripe that um, runs from um, east to west um, across the field as a marker and um, there's five feet behind that so you think this is probably the finish line uh, that they were talking about and then you are going to see two squares in the middle of this uh, or on either side of the field uh, that have been marked out with this uh, powder on either side you don't know exactly what those are for hmm. at this point um, you are starting to see some um, gathering of uh, elves outside this field and uh, they've brought some picnic lunches and some wine and they're hanging out with their friends and eating and drinking you think you've probably got about another hour or so to go before the sun goes down and when this uh, game is supposed to be played hmm alright let's wander and explore looks like the terrain is easy as it can be Yes, it's a uh, short cropped grass. Um, the ground here is very level. Um, it's dry. It's, there's no mud or any sort of conditions that would you would lose your footing. It just seems like a grassy field. Hey, Alunados. Um, I've read in some books that people who kind of live in the forest are a bit more in touch with it. Um, not just, you know... Uh, knowing the terrain and stuff, obviously, it looks pretty easy. But magically, would you have any ideas about what we might be able, be expecting magically? I don't know. Are there going to be like roots coming out of the ground? Or are there going to be flying birds that come and attack us? Do you have any insight? Well, these are wood elves, not high elves. Well, so, they're still elves, right? True. I'm looking at things I don't actually know too much about elves. <laughs> uh, Talia? Or Nifron? Or Alexander? Do any of you have any idea? Nifron's gonna speak up and say, Well, anyone can use magic. Wood elves are mostly known for their, their quickness and prowess in the woods, but they're awesome casters. Real good at hiding. No, yes, they are. That'll serve them well here. I don't see anyone hiding out in this flat plain unless they're small enough to get behind that blade of grass. <laughs> um, you know what? Julia is going to walk up and down the field and make sure there are no pit traps. Uh, okay, give me a investigation check. <laughs> An 11. Um, you look around and everything seems like it's on the up and up to you. There's no, you know, pieces of, of branches or leaves or anything covering up any potential pits or anything like that. Okay, then. Uh, do we see anyone gathered around that we can talk to and see if we can learn more about the, the these traditions? I mean, yeah, there. I mean, there's several groups of elves that have gathered here that are uh, um, eating and drinking do you want to approach one um i'm gonna kind of nudge alunas and say go talk to someone and, and and see if you can learn anything more important I'll like try. if there's if there's rules on the use of magic yeah i'll go look into the rules i don't know if they'll be willing to talk to someone who's going to be challenging their team but we'll see all right so um the nearest group that you see here is a group of wood elves that seem to be kind of getting rowdy. Um, they've uh, kind of made a fire 
and they're cooking some rabbits over it and they're drinking ale and uh, one thing that you notice is they're not wearing shirts and they have their faces covered in mud and um, they in Elvish have uh, the letters for lion um, spelled out on their chest and I will say to them in Elvish uh, howdy y'all I hope you don't mind me asking you a few questions. I'm not rightly familiar with this gang. Hoping y'all will uh, fill me in on some of the rules. <laughs> You're that outsider going to get beat by the lions tonight, huh? Well, I, that's what we're going to find out. I personally am hoping that I kick a little high in myself. And they, they all laugh. They say, you going to play the lions? You don't even know how the game's played? Yeah, gotta do what you gotta do. I'm looking to get up to the Fay Gate. Maybe uh, whoop a few high elves, go on through, become a man. <laughs> I like the sound of that. And uh, one of them says, give him something to drink. And uh, they pull out a mug and they've got this uh, large wine skin. And they're going to pour you uh, up some wine uh, up to the brim of this thing. And they thrust it out for you to take. Lunadas takes it and chugs it. And uh, they start screaming, chug, 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 chug. chug, chug. chug. Oh, dear. <laughs> and uh, you finish that off, and uh, that's a constitution check of three. <laughs> um, this is some strong wine, and uh, your head starts to get a little swimmy, and uh, they're going to fill your uh, mug back up with wine. Oh, I better take it slow. I don't want to throw up out there on the field. And <laughs> I do want to win this. Damn, it's been a while since I had good Elvin wine. <laughs> well, you probably going to throw up that first hit though. Tom Crady gives you. Well, he'd have to try. I'm speedy. Dancy, uh, dancy. Well, my advice to you is don't let him get anywhere near you because he'd knock a tar out of you, boy. I know he'll want to. I am fixing to let him. Now... About them rules, are we allowed to do just like whatever? Like use weapons, use spells? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. But what if we like, what if we kill somebody? That that seems like it'd be one of them faux paws. Oh, you ain't gonna kill nobody. Ain't nobody around here hit that hard. Plus, we got clerics out here and, and druids and rangers cast all sorts of healing spells. They ain't gonna let you die. You might wish you'd oh, die right. after you get hit by Tom Crady and his ill. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. Now that sounds like that. Now this sounds like a game I could have enjoyed. It need, it need some of that up north, you know. Come from across the river, don't you know? Oh yeah. Well, surely he, yeah, you he heard is. of the lions. And I tell you, Tom Crady ain't the one that you gotta watch out for. That old Rex Burhead, he'll knock his stuffing out of you. He hits twice as hard as Crady. They have to catch me first. Yeah, then you got old Christopher Duggan. He's a runner. So is that old Sonny Mikhail. But personally, my favorite's old Matt Slaughter. That's the one you gotta watch out for. He got all manner spells be tricking you up. Damn, you guys certainly got the home field advantage there. Know what you're doing. You got people who really know what they're doing in this game. We're going to have to pull out all the stops. Yep. Just go out there and score more points to other teams, all advice I could give you. Carry that egg across the field and stop them doing the same. Yep. All right. Thank you for the wine. Yep. No I'll, I'll give them back their mug and walk back over to the group. Oh. Well, good luck oh. to you. <laughs> they going to beat your ass anyway, but good luck. <laughs> And uh, the rest of his group of friends start uh, laughing as you walk back to your group. I will carefully make my way across the field. You know, one foot in front of the other. <laughs> All right, so it looks like anything goes. We can, yeah. yeah. Accent sticks in your mouth like red. We can use any weapons we want, use any spells we want. And if uh, anybody gets too badly hurt, the druids and clerics are there to bring them back that sounds good this game is brutal did you learn anything about how to play the game 
Mm-hmm. Aside from no rules, like how do we score? What, Get the egg squares? to the other side of the field, stop them doing the same thing. And there's only one egg, right? Uh, yes. Yes, definitely yes. I'm going to say yes. Okay. Field is 100 feet long. Well, I can do that even without my boots. And and I, I must have missed something. Where do we score? In the other boxes? end of the field. Oh, dang it. I forgot about the boxes. Past the yellow line. Yeah. Oh, past the like, So what are the boxes for? Do we know? Nope. Do <laughs> not. Outstanding. But, this is great. I'm excited. But I don't think I can drink another one of those bugs of wine. Ooh. Talia's going to head over and see if they'll talk to her. Okay. So you, uh, you walk over and they're getting pretty raucous. And uh, they're not paying any attention to you. I'm going to say, um, excuse me, I was just wondering if you could tell me, like, how, uh, what the boxes are for. Because I must have missed that in the uh, TLDR. Oh, uh, what boxes you talk about, little girl? Are there not boxes on the actual field? Like, these, these they right are. here? The, 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 are they actually orange? That's the other question. Uh, yeah. The orange boxes there in the center of the field? Oh, that's where that's that's where you start out with the egg. They put the egg in the box, and then you gotta pick up the box when they say go, and then you gotta take it to the, the other. Try to score on another team by taking her to the opposite finish line. How big is the egg? Oh, it's about yay big. And uh, he holds out his hand, and uh, he makes a shape that's probably about a foot by about uh, eight inches. And, and she's just gonna blink. She's like, "What? What lay is that? Like completely expecting like a chicken egg in this process because she has completely misinterpreted this whole thing in her brain." Oh, it's not really egg. It's 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 more a it's more a metaphor or simile, if you would. It it looks like an egg, but it's it's made out of stone. Oh, uh, uh, how much does it weigh? Oh, it's pretty heavy. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, and it's magical. Uh, it's magical. Oh yeah, they put all sorts of enchantments on it, so you can see it. What? Yeah, <laughs> so you could see it. Uh, like, would it be invisible otherwise? I don't understand. No, it just makes it easier for us to see up in the stands when you're when you're oh, carrying it across okay. the field. I I see. Okay, so magical rock called an egg. Uh, you take it from your box to the other side of the field across the the white line, or the, is it yellow or white? Uh, like on the field it's itself. White. Uh, across the white line, and then you score, and then you win, or do you have to score multiple times? Like I don't. Oh, it's the first, the three. Did, did they not explain this to you? Uh, to be fair, I'm, they might have, but I'm twelve and don't pay attention very well. And she's just kind of like gonna, you know, pretend like she's embarrassed and like you know, push her toe into the into the ground and, you know. Deception check. Is, is there anything else? We're, we're, we're kind of pre-gaming here. Uh, what is pre-gaming? He's gonna hand his mug of wine to you. He says, oh, pre-game. <laughs> she's, she's gonna sniff it and, and take a sip. Well, that ain't pre-gaming. Check! And then you hear him go, check, 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 check. check, check, check. check. Um, can I? Oh, God. Should I? No, I'm 12. I shouldn't do this at all. Check. Um, check. She's gonna, she's gonna, uh, tilt it back a little bit and take a bigger drink, but not, like, chug the whole thing, because that sounds like a really bad idea to her, and she doesn't really <laughs> like the taste of this. So, yeah, hand it back to him, and he's like, he looks at it and sees you didn't drink it all, and he's like, well, I guess that's smart. You gotta be running around. But, and I'm, you know, 12. I probably shouldn't drink too much I'm, I'm sure that it wouldn't be healthy for me or something i would get yelled at by my mom and <laughs> they all start laughing well thank you for your time have fun um pre-gaming and she's gonna say it like very specifically so that she wants to make sure she gets this term proper correctly um uh have fun pre-gaming and i i i, uh, I appreciate it and just walk away and good luck getting your ass kicked and then you hear him go, lines, 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 as they start chanting. She's, so she's going to go back to the group and, and uh, 
relay any information they might have missed in all of this and also say we do we have a team name did we decide that did i just miss that i've been a little overwhelmed i would want to be the red dragons but that might be too obvious around that I was time the bats. around this time uh, there's this uh it's it's starting to get dark and and the the, the stands are starting to fill and around this time you are going to see this uh, elf approach you in these uh, uh, black and white robes and uh, says uh, we're going to be getting started here pretty soon and we're going to be doing announcements and such and I ain't heard what your team name is what y'all's called for the announcements we are the Uh, pointy things (laughs) the pointy things I uh She's gonna like look at the others. Like I don't know. It just I, I don't I don't know. I like pointy things. I don't know what to say. The daggers. Yeah, the daggers. Okay. Uh, is is that it? Y'all y'all got a hometown y'all play out of? Um, we are traveling. traveling. <laughs> okay, I guess the daggers. It is. The the traveling daggers. She sh- shouts after them if they're walking away. <laughs> oh, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll write that down. That's that's what'll be in the announcements. Traveling daggers, and uh, you see him walk off to uh, one side of the field where uh, a group of other people uh, in these same black and white robes um, have started to gather. Uh, and around this time, um, the sun is starting to set, and the stands have started to fill up. One of the uh, people in the black and white robes and. Um, he kind of stands out because he's got this uh, large, pointy, black and white cap. He's uh, going to step out to the middle of the field and uh, motions uh, for you um, to come to the uh, center of the field. About that time, on the other side of this field, um, you are going to see a group of uh, five uh, wood elves uh, approach the center as well. They are wearing these uh, blue and white tunics uh, with the symbol of a lion in white on the breast. Get a feeling that these are the lowland lions that you've heard so much about. And we go up to the center, I guess. There's Tom Crady. Yeah, he's leading the pack here, and uh, he's got these uh, this long, flowing blonde mane that he's uh, pushing out of his eyes. You guys make it to the, uh, the center of the field, and... Um, this uh, person in the black and white robes is going to start casting this spell and uh, you're going to hear him clear his throat and it's like super loud <clears throat> can you all hear me and um, the crowd on in the stands start going wild he's going to say I welcome you all to the egg bowl we got a special treat for you. We got a very own low and lines against uh, against the and another one of the, the people in the black and white robes leans into his ear and starts whispering something to him and he says, "And the traveling daggers should be a special treat for you." But uh, before we get started, I'd have everybody stand. And uh, everybody stands up, and you see this. Uh, this elderly woman come out and uh, she starts singing this uh, song in uh, Elvish that uh, I think only a wounded us would understand talking about the uh, the greatness of uh, Lullen and uh, how they're the, the best uh, wood elves in the land and how fertile their uh, forest is and then uh, she gets done and everybody claps and uh, they sit back down he says, okay, before we get started, everybody, we're going to keep this, this good and fair. Nobody going to get killed. So play your hardest. And uh, now we're going to do the coin toss. See who gets started first. I'd have the team captains come on up here. And you see uh, Tom Crady come up and approach him. And... Uh, he looks at you and he says, Daggers, who's your captain? Alunadas, I think it's your show. Okay. Alunadas, step forward. He says, uh, 
All right, what we got here is a Fadel gold piece. On one side, we got a bust of the king. On the other side here, we got the gates of the city. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this up in the air and you daggers being the, the, the traveling team here, I mean, hell, it's even in your name. I'm gonna let you call it, okay? Okay. So I'm about to flip it. Is it gonna be is it gonna be heads or gates? Heads. Okay, so um, we'll say that that's odds and uh, the gates are evens. Mm-hmm. He flips the coin into the air and the uh, the light glints off of it and you see Tom Crady looking at it expectantly and then it hits the ground and he says, Heads it is. Y'all gonna take the egg first. All right. And the uh, the crowd cheers. And uh, one of these other um, people in the black and the white robes are gonna walk down here um, to the bottom side. And uh, he's gonna say, "This this here is what you're defending. This is your side of the field. So you gotta run the ball up to their end of the field. You got one minute to do it." And then he is. He's got this uh, sack that he is going to pull this uh, large um, stone egg out of. And he's going to put it down on the ground in the box. And he's going to start casting some enchantments on it. And uh, the first enchantment you'll recognize as light. Um, So there's this um, glow that pops up around the egg. And um, you also notice when he does that, you're going to see these uh, fairy fire torches start springing up around the field to illuminate it, and then he's going to. Catch. So it's not dim light. Uh, no, it's pretty bright, and well, uh, and then you're going to see um, him cast fairy fire on this egg as well. So um, the egg now is glowing um, with this uh, dim um, yellow light. And then around it is this purplish um, fairy fire coming up from it. So the uh, person in the black and white robes says, gives you a nod. And he says, just tell me when you're ready. And he looks over at the, uh, the lions and they spread out into this uh, fo- like arrow-like formation. And they nod to the, uh, this person in the black and white robes. And then they uh, look over to you. Are you ready? Yep. He uh, casts this uh, flame bolt cantrip up in the air and yells, go! And I want to need everybody to roll initiative. I'm fixing my initiative, by the way. Okay. Easier to ask forgiveness than permission. Do what you got to do, Ty. Is uh, everybody in? Yep. Sure am. All right. So, uh, Talia, you're first up. What do you want to do? <laughs> Suck it, Tom Crady. Um, <laughs> I am. There's a lot of people saying that right now. <laughs> in real life. Uh, so I am going to, uh, since it appears that, um, uh, I actually have no idea what I can do. I'm. Uh, how have? Can I lift the egg? As like, when I know. If that's something I can do, uh, you don't know. The egg is just currently lying there on the ground inside this box that's outlined in uh, uh, this line. I am I am going to attempt to lift the egg. Okay. So uh, you roll, uh, run over, and you grab this egg, and you pick it up, and it probably weighs a good um, maybe seven or eight pounds. I mean, it's heavy, but it's not so heavy that you can't pick it up. Okay, so I can. I'm gonna lift up the egg, okay. and I am going to use my dash function to try and get. Hold on, let me measure it again. And these squares are accurate, yes. Yes. To here. Okay. So, first off, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. 8, 9, 10, 11. What's your movement? Uh, it's 60, and I was standing there, and that measured to 60. That's what that was. I was measuring. Okay. Um, so first off, you are going to take an attack of uh, opportunity from uh, Christopher Duggan. 
and he is going to try to grapple you. Um, yeah, okay. So that is a 22. You can uh, either contest it with an athletics or acrobatics check. Nine. All right, so you make it to about here, and he is going to reach out and grab you, and you are currently grappled. Well, it has an action. I do. Um, can, how does that, disengage doesn't work like that, I'm sure. Nope. Um. Well, most people have to use a standard action to disengage. Right, I used my so dash already. Could do. Yeah, or but was that was a bonus dash. action. You, you'll still have your bonus action because you weren't able to dash because you were basically grappled immediately. So you still okay, got your action Okay, then I'm going to try bonus. to stab him. Okay. 19. Uh, that hits. Uh, sneak attack. So a total of 21 damage. Okay. Uh, and then my offhand. It's a 15. Uh, that misses. So 21 damage to him to try to make him let me go. Okay. Using my, my, uh, actually utilizing my little spring-loaded lo- dagger thingies. I have them. All right. Is that it? Yeah, unless he lets me go. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he doesn't let you go. All right, uh, next up is Tom Crady. He's going to move down here and flank you. And he is going to attack you with his uh, longsword. That is a 12, that misses, and a 25. That will hit, but I will uncanny dodge whatever that damage is. Uh, Okay, so that'll be a total of 8 damage. Uh, Next up is Rex Burhead. He is going to run over here, and he has a um, two short swords, and he is going to attack you. Uh, that's a seven that misses, a sixteen. Does that hit? That misses. Okay, and then a thirteen. So all three of those miss. Uh, next up is Sonny Mikkel. He's going to come down here and flank. That's a fifteen that misses, a twenty-one that hits. And a 16. That misses as well. Okay, so you're so, going to take 10 damage. Uh, uncanny dodge? Uh, you can only do that once around as a reaction. So you've already used it. it I, sorry, I was just reading uncanny dodge. I didn't realize that. It just says that starting at 5th level, when an attacker that you see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to ha- have the attacker's damage. I'm guessing I only get one reaction. Yeah, everybody gets one reaction. Oh, the, so the damage before would have been 10 or, or eight, 16, and I have to, to, to 8? or Correct. Okay, just making sure. All right, next up is Matt Slaughter, weighing in at 110 pounds from Low and Fadel. What's he going to do? He is going to Tumble. cast, he is going to cast some Magic Missile um, for 4 damage. Uh, next up is Lunados. All right. Is there any way I can get the ball from Talia? The egg. Um, you could probably, with a athletics check or a strength check, muscle your way in here and see if uh, you can get it away from her. Okay. Um, I am going to click my heels together to use my boots. Okay, that's your bonus. And I am going to come up and, let's see, I'm going to try and clear the field a bit, get them away from her, so on her turn she can move. That means I'm going to start punching. Okay, who are you punching? I'm going to punch Tom Crady first. Good choice. <laughs> well, technically I'm using my quarter staff, but still. Ooh, that's a crit. Oh, my beautiful face. Or no. (laughs) Oh, my beautiful face. Uh, So that's a hit. Go ahead and do your damage first. So it's a 14 on the crit. All right. And then a four on the crit table. uh, That is hamstringed. Oh, this is good for you. Target is slowed to half movement until the end of the encounter. Uh, Deck save ends DC 10. Hey. All right. Um, my second attack will also be against Tom Brady. I can't start pushing people until uh, 
Yeah, sorry, your blow is going. Uh, no advantage, so that's just a 13. Uh, that's gonna miss. And the third punch is 26. Uh, that'll hit. For 10 more damage on top grading. Alright. And uh, spend a cheap point for flurry of blows. It's 27 on Tom Grady. That hits. That's eight more damage. And he is going to get pushed. Uh, DC 14. Uh, da -da -da. Where's the set? Uh, strength. Strength. Uh, what was the DC? 14. Uh, yeah, he gets pushed. Okay, so he's 15 feet to the north now. And now, the second flurry of blows is going to be on Sunday Michael. Oh, that's only a 12. That's going to miss. Okay. Um, I think flurry of blows only gets me two uh, attacks. All right, is that it? Uh, let's see. I think so, yes. All right, next up is Christopher Duggan. He is going to take his uh, axe and swing at Talia. Uh, that's a nine that misses. That's a nine that misses too. Man, he has poor aim. Uh, Alexander, you're up. It's my time to shine. Uh, I am going to run over. Talia's got the ball, right? Uh, she has the yep. egg. Again, the egg. I'm going to run up and then I'm going to slap her shoulder and cast invisibility. Okay. So you cast invisibility on Talia and you're going to see her disappear. Um, but the egg's still there glowing with fairy fire. Uh, anything else you want to do? That's about it. Okay. Best. Juliet, you're up. Okay, now question for Olinodos. Is Tom Crady... Um, oh no, he's not stunned. That's a slow. Okay, so Juliet's going to run interference here and move behind Rex Burrhead and next to Tom Brady. Brady, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> I would Who's never Tom use Brady? a real person's name. Who is this Tom Brady? I don't know. Some, some fictional character, I'm sure. Right. Um, and then... Julia is going to cast Fog Cloud. And let me get a point centered for that. I think right there she can do it. Okay. And that gives me, uh, or makes a 20 foot radius sphere of fog. And everything inside is heavily obscured, which means you basically can't see it. <laughs> Alright, uh, anything else you want to do? Uh, yes, Julia is going to take an action surge and take a swing at Tom Crady. Okay. And 11 probably misses. Yeah, that's going to miss. All right, that's it for Julia. You've also uh, got disadvantage on attacks in this fog cloud, too. Yep. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Right, let me roll the other thing in case it's a critical bit. No, I'm fine. All right, uh, next up is Talia. So Talia is going to try to get out of this grapple. Okay, uh, give me either an athletics or acrobatics check. 21. Stand by. You rolled a 12, so uh, yeah, you slip out of his grasp. Uh, and then I'm going to use my bonus action to disengage. Okay. Sorry, I'm not holding down my thing. I'm going to run into this fog cloud and run in this general direction. So you would be able to run your movement. You wouldn't be able to double dash because you've used... Right, right. Basically. So... Uh, there. I'm going to run. Okay. And none of them know where she is. No, they do, because I'm still holding the damn ball, which is glowing. Uh, true. That's true. That ends your turn, and uh, after Juliet casts that fog cloud, you're going to hear this eruption of booze uh, coming from the crowd because they can't see what's going on. <laughs> uh, next up is uh, Tom Crady. Um, real quick, does fog cloud affect um, uh, light dense? Like how it, it, light, if it's dim or not? Uh, it yeah, I mean it heavily he, uh, it heavily obscures uh, everything, but um, that kind of gets canceled out because of the fairy fire that's on the egg. So currently, so I wouldn't be able to turn into a bat. No, I mean, I mean, you would, but I mean, they would still be able to see the the egg. 
and at this point you're invisible, um, but they can still see that egg. And as you ran the by... Escaping the grapple didn't uh, cancel the invisibility? Oh yeah, that would have, because the, that would have been an action. So you're no longer invisible. Um, but people can see the glow of this fairy fire through this uh, fog cloud. So uh, as you run by, um, Todd Crady is going to see you run, and he's going to take off after you. But uh, that's as far as he can get because he's uh, currently slowed, and now he's going to make his uh, saving uh, throw against that effect. And he does not pass. He's still slow. Uh, next up is Rex, who's going to see you take off and run with the egg. Uh, he is going to double dash after you, and he's going to get up up in uh, front of you. Uh, that's all he can do. Uh, Sonny is going to take off after you as well. He's going to move there. Uh, next up is Matt Slaughter, who is going to cast Grease on his... Ah, there it is. Yep, so he casts uh, Grease uh, on you, Talia. Um... He, I'm in the fog cloud. Uh, doesn't matter. He the egg, egg has fairy fire on it. <laughs> oh. So really, he cast it on the egg. Correct. Uh, saving throw of some kind, I assume? Uh, it's when you begin or in your turn in it, so you'll save against that next turn. Gotcha. Uh, next up is the Lunidas. Alright, so important thing is to get the egg across the field, but I don't necessarily want to enter the grease. Okay, I am going to. Okay, I am going to attack Christopher Duggan. Okay. Eleven misses. Twenty-six hits. Oh, and a critical fail. All right. Uh, so that'll be six damage, and you rolled a twelve on a crit fail chart. Yep. Uh, that is attackers pulled one square. Or no, I rolled the wrong one. Uh, hurt self. You hurt yourself with the attack for 1d8 damage. 12 is... is, is attacker is pulled one square. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I, can't, I hit the wrong button. God, Kevin. God. So you're, you're right there, so it doesn't matter. All right. And now, um, spend chi point. 27, and Hits. he's pushed. And he's pushed 15 feet? Yep. What's and the DC? Strength... DC 14. Uh, that's an 11. He fails. Okay. I'm going to chase after him. And I'm going to hit him again. Try and push him again. Okay. Ooh, 26. Yep, he'll have to DC 14. Uh, DC 14 on a strength. Uh, that's a 20. He saves. Okay. So he stays there, but he'll take a total of 22 damage from you, Mr. Okay. Uh, next up should actually be Rex Burhead, not Christopher. I moved the wrong token. Gotcha. Rex is going to run right into that grease. Oh, I remember what I was going to ask. Um, what is the wind speed right now? Um, <laughs> it is currently, there is a gust that picks up that is, uh, 20 miles an hour coming from the east. I need to throw that rock. No, fog cloud, dude. Uh, oh, wind of moderate or greater speed disperses it at least 10 miles per hour. Wow. Oh, good call. So I guess when does it disperse? We'll just say it moves it over here. All right. All right, so Rex is up, and he's coming to uh, tackle Talia. Uh, he enters the grease field, so I want to make him make a saving throw. Uh, that's a five. <laughs> so he's going to fall down. Uh, but he is going to uh, reach for your legs, Talia, and try to grapple you. Uh, that is a 15. 21. Oh. Um, you uh, avoid his uh, grapple. Uh, next up's Alexander. My time to shine. Um, what do I even want to do? Uh, I should probably do something to support Talia. And uh, so the black is the the grease. Yes. I will try and 
Let's see if I have any useful spells. Uh, let's see the range on Major Image. On the field. I, w- I would like to use Major Image, uh, a level 3 spell, okay. to end the 20 foot um, like square around Talia. Uh, and <laughs> is there. Oh, between Talia and Alunidas. I believe that's less than 20 feet. Right here? Yeah. It is less than 20 feet. So I'd like to encompass like uh, that area uh, using Major Image and make it appear as if Talia passed the egg over to Alunidas. Uh, okay. Wouldn't they and, still see the egg since it has fairy fire on it? Oh, even if I... Hmm. It would look like there's two eggs with fairy fire. Not a bad thing. I will still do it. All right. Anything else? Nope. I will pass the turn. All right, Juliet. All right. With we'll the snap of our deck. fingers, Juliet dismisses the fog cloud. Okay. Don't need that anymore. That um, your bonus? What's that? That's your bonus, right? To dismiss. Nope. Them. Dismissing is just a free action. I don't even have okay. to do anything. She just has to drop a uh, concentration on it because it's a yeah. concentration spell. I got you. All right. All right. Uh, then. Juliet is going to move up to Tom Crady and use Green Flame Blade. Whoa! I've never used. Whoa! I feel at this point you're just trying to hurt Tom Crady and not help Talia. <laughs> uh, I admit Tom uh, has a pretty face that I'd like to destroy. <laughs> All right. Uh, hold on. She was Where's she was talking? wronged in her past, like by a Tom. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, really, who hasn't been? Okay, so that's gonna be. I make an attack action with along with the spell. And if it hits, some fire jumps at the guy next to him. If not, then nothing happens. All right. That is a natural one. I'm rolling hot today. <laughs> Roll the chart. That is a seven. Uh, hurt self. You hurt yourself with the attack for 1d6 damage. So... 5 damage. Okay. Talia, you're up. Alright. So, I am going to try to move... You started your turn in it. Don't you have to make a dexterity save? I do. Okay, hold on. 23? Uh, you're good. Alright, so I'm gonna move... Hold on, I measured it and then I forgot. I'm gonna move to the line like over here so that I bypass or I'm going to disengage and then move to the line okay um, so that this guy doesn't get a, a attack of opportunity and then I'm going to cast mage hand and have the hand move the ball over the line and see if that scores us a point okay so uh, you run up here and you cast this little uh, spell and you move uh, uh, this across the line and uh, you see the uh, the ref um, shoot up this uh, flame bolt cantrip, and uh, it appears that you've scored. And uh, you're going to hear like uh, about three quarters of this crowd boo, and then uh, you're going to hear the other quarter like cheer. Most of it's coming from one side, and you look over and like the front row, um, Bellin's there and he's cheering that you scored person in the uh, black and white robes is going to cast this spell and all the effects um, are going to disappear from the field Um, so grease disappears and then uh, you're going to see some clerics come out and start healing everybody cool so we're all back up to full yep and they are going to uh, move the ball or the egg to this square over here and then you're going to see the uh, the lions uh, line up. <laughs> uh, where are we allowed to line up? Uh, anywhere in front of uh, five feet in front of the ball. Okay. Get closer to Talia so we can't run the team. All right. Or if you, you actually there, it's perfect. Do you have reach on opportunity attacks? Uh, oh, good point. So I could get over here and. Well, that would create overlapping fields. That's what we want, I guess. I have a brilliant idea, but I, uh, I'm i going to need some cover for it. Are you just going to throw the ball egg? 
through across the thing. No, no. I uh, I have this guy's self, and I've gotten a pretty good look at uh, Tom Crady. I feel like pretending to be the star player would be perfect. But uh, I I was going to do that with Fog Cloud cover, but there's no point because I'm not going to have enough rounds to pull that off. Just keep in mind that with my boots on, I can run across the entire field in a single turn. Nice. All right, so uh, you line back up, and uh, the man in the black and white robes uh, asked everybody if they're ready, and they signal yes, and he fires another flare into the air, and I need everybody to roll with initiative again. Oh, did we heal back up to full? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also, can we just steal the egg from them? Uh, you don't know. You haven't tried. So first up is Tom Crady. He is going to run up, and he is going to grab the egg, and he is going to make it this far. He's going to trigger attacks of opportunity from Talia and Nifron. And Julia. What, what about me? I have 10-foot reach. Oh, yeah, and Julia. Um, I'm going to uh, attempt to jump on his back. Uh, okay, give me a athletics check. Athletics or acrobatics? Uh, I would say for this, um, you could use either. 19. Uh, that's a 23. Well, shit. Uh, <laughs> so you try to jump on his back and he shrugs you off. And, uh, Juliet, go ahead and make your attack opportunity. I roll a 10. Uh, that's gonna miss. And Nifron, that is an 11. He's gonna miss. Uh, next up is Matt Slaughter. He is going to cast Grease again. And he's going to cast it in this area right here. Uh, next up is Sunny. He is going to run forward here and attack uh, or, or try to grapple Nifron. And he just finds air as Nifron slips out of the way. Uh, Linodos, you're up. Alexander, you're on deck. Ah. So, so I am not an athletic guy, but I can come up here and... See, grabbing the egg, that would just be athletics, yeah? Uh, yeah, it would be, uh, contested, uh, let, let's make this contested strength rolls. Okay, so that's why I'm not going to do that. All right. Instead, I'm just going to try and punch him and shove him. So, 19 for the first attack. Hits. Is that a hit? Yeah, it hits. Okay, so it's 8. 21 for 6 more. 17, don't know if that hits. Uh, that, uh, hits. Okay, for another 10. Now, for your blows. 11 is going to miss. 27 hits. And DC 14 strength check on shoving him straight back to top. Okay. Keep getting the egg when I try to select him. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That is a 21 crit. Dang. So he stays where he is, but he took uh, 24, 31 points. So you run out in front of him and you just start punching and kicking. And uh, he's like, his knees are like wobbling and his knees are clacking together. He's barely standing. Uh, Alexander, you're up. Yarg, uh, I am going to uh, attempt to use Ray of Frost on Tom's feet. Okay. And I believe that that's a DC of 14. Let me double check. Ray of Frost is not an attack roll? Uh, would, yeah. Is it? There are, let me check. Here, let me put the card out for you. Uh, yeah, it is attack roll. Uh, let me. Oh, you forgot. Unless it started a new encounter when we started this new round about Tom Crady's slowness. Um, all effects in heal uh, are taken away, and everyone's healed at the beginning of each. Okay. All right. So roll your uh, attack. Thirteen. Um, that's going to miss as the ray of frost goes wide. Nice pass. Uh, next up is Christopher Duggan. He is going to run right here as about as far as he can get. That's going to end his turn. Juliet, you're up. All right. Isn't Holly, there an attack up. of a top opportunity? He can walk around. Ah, okay. Uh, Juliet, you're up. Tall, you you're on. All right. Taking an attack from Alexander of some kind, I think. All right, oh, so yeah. He would, he would have taken an attack of opportunity from Alexander, so go ahead and take that. Uh, I'll roll. 12. Uh, that's going to miss. Nice. Juliet. What is this blue square? Is that another grease? Grease. All right. So and it's Ju- only if you begin or end there, right? Yes. Wait, oh, run through. 
Okay, so Julia is going to move around provoking an attack of opportunity from Sonny and Michael. I don't know what to do. Uh, that's a 19. That will hit. Six damage. Okie dokie. And Julia's going to continue her move. And she is going to attempt to wrest the egg from Tom Crady's grasp. Uh, okay, give me a strength check. A nine. Wow, okay. Why do I even roll skill checks? Um... <laughs> Springs Eternal. Yeah, he rolled a 20. Yeah, okay. So that's it for Julia. Tali, you're, you're up. So Tali's going to turn around and uh, throw her uh, daggers of returning at the back of Tom Brady's head because he's making her angry. Who's Tom Brady? It's Tom Crady. <laughs> I, I swear I meant Tom Crady. I actually don't care about football, so... Uh, Bro. So I'm throwing them at Tom Crady. Um, first attack is a 21. All right, that hits. Sneak attack. Uh, before you do that, you throw that dagger and it lands in his back and you're going to see him collapse. Oh, really? Nice. So the egg is now free. Okay, so she is going to... <sighs> She's going to try to move through this uh, to okay. where he is. Give me a dexterity check, or dexterity saving throw. 20. Yeah, so you so, uh, you run through here and you start to slide, but it's like, um, you, like you're on ice, but you're experienced being on ice, so you just slide on through it, and then you uh, make it to where he just fell. So she's going to grab the egg. Um, that was 15. She's going to... She haven't, hasn't used her bonus action yet, so she'll dash... Uh, it would be your bonus action to pick it up because you moved and then you used oh, your gotcha. to throw the dagger. So you would use your bonus action to pick up the uh, egg. Okay, so I'm going to move here then. And one second. Damn. Uh, um, you know that's your finish line, right? Oh, shit balls. Uh, I lied. I'm not going to move that away. Yeah, you really so don't know how this game is played. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm Subtract all that. I'm actually not going to run through there. I am going to... No, I am, because I can't cast Mage Hand, because that's an action, and I use my action to attack yep. him. So I am going to do all that and pick this up, and then um, that will be my turn, I suppose. Yep. All right, next up is Nifron. Uh, he is going to attack this Sunny Mikael. Uh, that's a 22, a 16, and a 17. All three of those hit. Uh, you are going to see... <laughs> this uh, Sonny Mikkel just fall to the ground unconscious uh, next up is Rex Burhead um, he's going to see Sonny go down and he's going to run up here to Nifron and attack uh, the first one's a crit miss that is take negative one to AC and saves uh, the second one is a 23 and Nifron is actually going to use a <clears throat> reaction to parry that alright uh, next up is Matt Slaughter um, he is going to uh, see Crady go down and um, Talia pick up that egg. So he is going to cast Lightning Bolt at you. So give me a deck save. Uh, you and Alunidas both will need to give me deck saves. 20. Okay. Alunidas. 26. Uh, okay, so you're both going to take half damage, so you are going to take uh, six points of damage. Uh, next up is Sonny, but he's down. Alunidas, you're up. All right. Uh, can I get the egg from Talia? Uh, you could ask her for it. Talia, give me the egg. I'll pass it to him. Like, is that... Yeah, I'm going to pass it to him as long as that's allowed. Yep. Okay, so I have the egg, and now I'm just going to end of the answer. Okay. So, uh, she... You grab the egg from Talia, and you run into the... Over the finish line, and, um, you hear like a quarter of the crowd erupt and the rest of the crowd is just stunned in silence and then uh, you see uh, this uh, elf in the, the black and white robe shoot up uh, three flares you see the, the crowd um, like start to uh, like dissipate and uh, you get the feeling this uh, is the end of the game and you just beat him just, did, was that like a triple score? Uh, it was best no it's three. best out of three. Oh. So, uh, so we, Bell, um, the the clerics and the uh, druids are, are going to come out on the field and start um, healing the lions, and um, 
as soon as Tom Crady uh, gets up, becomes conscious, and looks over and sees uh, a Lunados uh, with the egg over the finish line, you're going to hear him start cursing. Gosh, damn it! You're going to see the uh, the rest of the uh, Lullin Lions here, like uh, pick him up and uh, they retreat off the field. Uh, Bellin's going to come up to you and say, "I I I can't I can't believe it." I didn't think anybody could beat the, the Lions, much less some people never played the game before. Well, we have some experience at fighting. I guess um, that translates to this. <laughs> Where does accent go? <laughs> well, it sure was some fancy footwork that you got there, and I guess uh, they helped you win the day. I'm sure Colin have no problem uh, giving you an endorsement to, to head on up through the woods to the, the Fay Gate. Still don't mean you're going to make it here. I mean, you 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 got a lot of dangers up there, not uh, the least of which them high elves and the other wood elves around here. Yeah, we'll do what we can. We got, uh, you know, I mean, we can handle ourselves pretty well, as you've seen. Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Well, y'all should get healed up by the clerics, and, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a big party at the, the tavern tonight um, to celebrate your win. I know there's not going to be a lot of people in town happy about it, so I'd probably watch your back, but you meet me down at the end later on. I'll buy you some drinks. See you there. Juliet, the accent's back. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's probably a pretty good place to end it right there. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dungeons & Debacles podcast. If I could ask a halfling size favor... Give us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. It's the best way to support us. New episodes come out every Monday, so make sure to check your podcast app. Do you have an idea to make the podcast better? Tell us about it on Twitter or Facebook. You can also check out our website to see all the maps, lore, and characters at DungeonsAndDebaclesPodcast.com. And now a word from our fantasy sponsor. Massacre Scott the Deals. Matt Cedric of Matt Cedric's Discount Goods and Adventures Emporium. Is your cleric a creep? Is your druid a drag? Try our healing potions. They put pep in your step and get you back in the fight. A healing potion will never try to convert you to a god or get into a moral debate with you. Just drink it and feel better about the decisions that led you to your current situation. Try our new flavors exclusive to Matt Cedric's Discount Goods and Adventures Emporium. Berry Blitz, Melon Melee, and Arctic Gel. Side effects may include delusions of grandeur, increased risk of infection, drowsiness, impotence, red ache, and bloody stool. Ask your cleric if healing potions are right for you. My prices are so low, I'm practically giving this stuff away. How do I do it? Don't worry about it. Come on in to Matt Cedric's Discount Goods and Adventures Emporium. We have convenient locations in a city near you. Just talk to the town guard for directions. Matt Cedric's Discount Goods and Adventures Emporium, where the only thing matter than me is the savings. Matt Cedric's got the deals. The music you heard on this episode was Teller of the Tells, Village Consort, Arcane, Majestic Hills, and Heroic Age by Kevin McLeod in Competech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0 License. CreativeCommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 3.0.